Uh, a very good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to yet another training program from iFluids Engineering. Our topic for the day is OSC RP108 Recommended Practices on Oil Storage and Handling. Uh, let's meet our trainer for the day. Our trainer for the day is Mr. Srinivasan V. He's having 41 years of experience in refinery, project planning, boat analysis, erection, pre commissioning, and commissioning. HAZOP, Unit Startup, Operations Training and Development Audit, Assessment and Quality Assurance, PHA Operations and Project Management in the field of Petroleum Refinery, Oil and Gas and Chemical Plants. We heartily welcome you to the session, sir. Yeah. Um, so before we move on to the session, I would like to request everyone uh, to make this an interactive session. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can post your uh, doubts in the link that is shared in the uh, LinkedIn and YouTube live comment section. So we'll be addressing each and every queries at the end of the session. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, now I request uh, Srinivasan sir to take forward the session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, madam. Welcome to all the participants. Uh, we'll start with the uh, presentation. This presentation is uh, for the recommendation, uh, recommended practices on oil storage and handling. This is uh, uh, issued by OLD, Oil Inspected uh, Safety Directive, and uh, <coughs> under 108, these are the recommended uh, uh, practices. So now, these are the things we'll be seeing. Uh, the introduction, objective, scope, definitions, design considerations for uh, storage tanks, design consideration, tank heaters, tank operation, loading, unloading facilities, and the handling of slop. The references are already given on the website. And uh, for uh, some uh, pictures or uh, any references, can always see on the left side they are all given there and the uh, right side is major <laughs> mainly dealing with the OSD uh, recommendations so now uh, refineries or any hydrocarbon um, facilities uh, oil and gas they basically handle gaseous liquid and uh, solid uh, material then uh, Petroleum and uh, petrochemical products consist of crude and petroleum products like uh, CNG, the compressed natural gas, LNG, LPG, petrol, and uh, other things, including asphalt. And, and under the petrochemical, it's a wide spectrum of uh, chemicals are there. These are all forming uh, part of the oil and gas. In addition to that, the refineries or even the oil producing wells and all, they handle organic and inorganic chemicals. So that is also a part of that. The oil refineries, uh, receptor storage is uh, done or uh, happening by means of ships or by pipelines. Where from the oil producing wells, the oil is uh, getting collected and they uh, do some filtration and the cleaning uh, thing, the activities and they pump out to the oil refineries if possible or oil is coming by tank, super tankers or tankers also from different parts of the world that's what normal uh, scenario in a very few cases they are very close to the oil uh, wells but normally it is not so so in the refineries, they handle crude, which consists of a, a spectrum of different uh, hydrocarbons, it a mixture. And there they uh, do the processing and all, do they get the value added products. And in the course of the time, they get the many intermediate products and they do have the finished products also, and they handle chemicals, this is what it is. For all these things, you need to store because uh, 
continuously it may not be possible they may have to store at uh, some location and uh, take it for the reprocessing and all those things that's what the uh, thing and the finished products definitely they have to be sold to the customers so it may not be possible to pump out directly from the refinery to the end uh, user so they need the uh, storage from there it is getting distributed so this is the basic uh, thing so the oil terminals normally they are situated on the port side because it is easy for them to ship and uh, for inland this one they do the cross uh, cross country pipeline and uh, distribute so oil storage uh, the terminals they basically they have many different types of tanks which we will be seeing and what are the difficulties in handling and what are the merits and demerits all these things will be seen that is about the storage what the distribution is happening again through pipeline because the products also can be distributed or pumped through pipeline or uh, tanker trucks also they take it and the rail wagons also it is then and the ship and bar bar the bars so that is how the distribution so, so all these things have uh, can happen in oil terminal or it part of it may happen it depends on the location or requirement <clears throat> this picture if you see uh, refining process uh, refineries from the refineries all these uh, uh, intermediate products and products they are getting stored in this thing there are different types of tanks which we will be seeing and uh, from there again they are getting shipped as i said shipping or a rail uh, rail wagon or truck and pipeline that is how it is so the now the scope of the particular presentation is uh, limited to osd uh, recommended practices 108 because the osd has issued so many other uh, 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 directives which uh, which are covered in different uh, There was some short interruption. I'll continue that. So basically, this OSD uh, recommended practices uh, is restricted to the handling of uh, hydrocarbon chemicals and the distribution. This is what other things are hand, uh, <coughs> taken care in other uh, directives. Okay. No. That's why it is written does not cover the storage and handling of propane, LPG, butane, etc., which require pressurized cryogenic material taken the separate uh, uh, directives. Okay, <clears throat> even inside also there are different classification. They are cover covered under different uh, uh, directives. So, what is the objective of this particular presentation? For better understanding of the workplace systems and their function. And performing work safely. These are the two main things which definitely need for anyone to work in the terminal. So before going into further, so there are some basic things which I'll just uh, uh, recap so that it will be easy for us to understand better because these are all directly connected with the uh, uh, terminal operations, hydrocarbon terminal operations. So, what is a flammable liquid? Uh, it is the ability to produce ignitable vapors. It is a fundamental hazardous property of flammable and combustible uh, liquids. Then, the vapor pressure, all of you definitely must be aware of that. So, vapor pressure is very important aspect. Then, boiling point, flash point, 
the flash point is uh, very critical in this uh, oil storage uh, facilities the temperature at which vapors above liquid surface can be ignited this is one point and fire point temperature at which liquid will ignite and sustain fire and auto ignition by itself it can uh, catch fire there are certain uh, uh, limitations on that and the vapor air uh, density and uh, liquid density and water miscibility these are all the important uh, aspects in uh, oil storage handling this one is and depots and terminals and uh, for the safety aspects also uh, uh, lower explosive limit upper explosive limit these are all directly uh, connected with the oil terminal operations because definitely people will have to go inside to work in the, inside the tank that time they will form a part of a confined space entry so what are the norms or uh, stipulations put for confined space entry everything will be applied here also similarly hot work in a confined space for working in a close proximity on public road this is also important because terminals may be uh, the, the proximity wise they will be closer to uh, public roads so they cannot just work like that so certain uh, norms and uh, stipulations are there they have to follow those things so this safety aspect is also has to be kept in mind so they have to uh, strictly follow that now we are coming to tanks uh, terminals usually contain different types of tank that is uh, atmospheric tanks low pressure tanks and medium pressure and uh, high pressure tanks atmospheric tanks they normally operate in the same atmospheric pressure it is a types vertical uh, they are vertical and cylindrical tanks bolted or may not be bolted the bolden they they used to be using bolted tank even today throughout the world many countries they have that because they cannot do a second thing is a low pressure uh, tank they operate in the range of 0 to 2.5 psig they are cylindrical with the flat and the dish to bottom and other things and uh, sloped or dome roofs usually they are welded bolt tanks are used for very low pressures then medium pressure tanks this is another type they operate in the range of 2.5 to 15 k psig they are used for high volatile products cylindrical with a flat or dish to bottoms or sloped or dome roofs this is how it is low pressure uh, tanks usually are welded welded spheres can also be used and high pressure tanks they are above they operate above 15 psig pressure and the refined they use the refined products for fractional uh, fractionated components at above 15 psig they are more volatile here they are normally cylindrical or spherical and welded so now the tanks are also uh, uh, classified petroleum products are classified into four different uh, uh, categories it is flammable liquids having flash point below 23 degrees that is first so they are very highly volatile one then flammable liquids having flash point of 23 degrees and above but below 65 degrees then flammable liquids having that is a c this is a c type which i am telling flammable liquids having flash point of 65 degrees and above but below 93 degrees and next the last one is d a class d that is a they operate above 95 liquids having a, a flash point of 93 degree uh, c petroleum uh, uh, and above that is how it is these are the four classifications that so now if you see uh, these are the general terminology i'll be showing now 
these are the terminals terminals are normally can be part of a refinery or separate unit because in the refinery also they have the storage facility and after uh, a free uh, is um, making the product they have to sell it so they pump it to different parts there also they they can have terminals so uh, all places cannot have refinery but uh, many locations can have terminals or depots it is that so they consist of tanks which receive crude products from oil tankers or rail wagons which already uh, uh, mentioned and what are the then next comes the slop it can be of different uh, two type wet slop and dry slop <coughs> see the slop is nothing but the waste which uh, crap coming out of the tank after cleaning or draining those kind of things are collected and uh, they are used either they can uh, recycle or they can sell it it is that so it is off specification products obtained from various uh, equipment or tanks or pumps of various plants this is uh, with respect to refineries for oil terminals it may not be uh, applicable and marketing pipeline insulation containing oil or water mixer because this slop normally contains some some amount of water so that is why it cannot be used uh, this one uh, reused this for the same products so they have to degrade it remove the water and reuse it or they, they have to burn it so it is that so then gantry this is the place where loading or unloading facilities to handle large number of wagons or trucks most of you must have seen the rail uh, wagons and things they are all uh, loaded in the these places in the gantry so and tanks atmospheric tank low pressure tank which we have seen earlier then uh, atmospheric tank this tank are designed as per the api code uh, 650 or equivalent and they can be of vent type or blanketing type blanketing type is uh, if oxygen is supposed to be if oxygen is supposed to be interacting and uh, degrading the product definitely they will not like to have so they use some inert atmosphere so normally nitrogen or uh, fuel gas some places wherever it is required so that type of blanket is is done so that to, to prevent atmospheric air uh, uh, entering into the tank like that so it can be of different types <coughs> then low pressure tank the uh, tanks are designed as per the apa code 620 the each code has got a certain stipulations they have to uh, design and uh, construct the tank as per that only because of a lot of safety standards are followed in that and uh, here the products having slightly higher vapor pressure are stored so that's why the stipulations can be higher and tank capacity there are three types One is nominal capacity, gross capacity, and net capacity. So this is all required for uh, calculating how much the tank is receiving, what is the actual uh, content to receive any material into the tank, how much uh, time it will take, what is the material, and uh, how much they can hold. These are all based on those things. And if any pumping is taking place, that also will be a part of this. how many capacities uh, fixed proof for the fixed proof tanks it is the geometric volume of the tank from bottom up to the curb angle and uh, floating roof for floating roof tanks it is the underside of roof tank, uh, deck up to the maximum floating position of floating roof then uh, gross capacity it is the capacity of the tank to the maximum safe filling height of the tank and uh, net capacity is net pumpable capacity of the tank during the operation that is safe filling height of the tank minus volume of the uh, tank bottom contents up to the bottom of normal uh, normal pump boot nozzle and uh, next is the sick wagon the wagons which are fire, so found to be having some leak Either a hose or some crack or whatever it is, 
they are probably they may be having hydrocarbon also those kind of things those kind of things definitely they are not they cannot be used but the hydrocarbon already within that uh, wagon has to be removed so there are provisions in the gantries to do that they remove and uh, they identify and uh, take it out of the service because otherwise uh, it can they can catch fire or uh, big accidents can take place and the left side if you see uh, there are open tank a fixed roof tank and uh, external roof tank like that so the safety increases and uh, by, by increasing the uh, improvement of the tanks that is what it is slightly faded so may not be that visible it is that so here this uh, uh, diagram shows how the uh, terminal looks there are so many different types of tanks are there you have pumps so you can interchange uh, pump it from one tank to other or through gantry all these things are a part of this so this is how the terminal looks it can be bigger or it can be small but basically it is that and uh, before going into the details of the uh, this one uh, uh, recommended practices. I'll go. I'll show you the diagrams so that you'll have better understanding. So this is the cold roof tank. Uh, you can see the parts uh, right from vent with the uh, gauge. Here you have the uh, this one uh, flame arrestor also. It may may not have. It depends on the refinery or uh, insulation. But normally they are supposed to have a flame arrestor. Then uh, <coughs> roof plates, then uh, cage the access ladder, and uh, here you have the manway, then a fill pipe for filling, and uh, you have the level machine. This one, this is a very old arrangement. Nowadays, they go for the radar type and uh, pump port facilities, and the bottom also you have manual uh, manway and all those things, and the uh, bottom drain also is there. So this is how the cone roof uh, tank normally is, looks. And cone roof uh, tanks are actually fixed roof tanks. So whatever I had shown earlier, it is uh, given in more uh, detail here. You have uh, right from bottom. The legend is uh, valves are a MOV is a motor operated valve and ROSO RO is uh, remote operated shut off valve. And uh, here you have the manhole here, I said, I said inter tank transfer line and uh, the sieving line, uh, different uh, heights they are all located. And plus, you have the draining facility, and this uh, drains can be of siphoning uh, drain line, and they go, go to the drain funnel and they get collected in the slope. That's what I said earlier. <laughs> Then uh, you for uh, uh, you have to take the level of the tank uh, the, the material in the tank. So they have to use the deep hatch through that it is done. And the vent line anyway I told, and the roof also has got a manhole. And for the pump out. See, this is the receiving line, so which is coming inside the tank. And uh, for pump out, they have a uh, different uh, setup. So it can be bottom section or upper section, depending. Because bottom section, if you take, it may, if any water is there, that also get, will get pumped. Upper section, normally they use it to avoid this uh, problem. So they can take it to wherever they want. And in addition to that, there is a if the material handled is uh, heavier type and it had to be kept under uh, uh, hot condition, warm condition, the heaters are also used. And to, to keep the material homogeneous, mixers are used. So that we will be seeing. So this is another, uh, this one, this is a floating roof tank. Here, the pontoons are used and they, uh, main difference between fixed roof tank and this one is uh, it is having 
the uh, fixed roof tanks they have went here uh, they the float will be moving along with the liquid that is very important this is because this floating roof tanks are used for uh, uh, high volatile uh, liquids that way they do uh, suppose like a petrol it, it is this is a highly volatile and uh, it can uh, you lose petrol so to avoid that this arrangement is used and the float will be almost on the surface of the liquid so that the vaporization loss will be very less and uh, about a 20 mm difference will be there between this uh, float and uh, this one that will be uh, covered by some sort of uh, uh, material which will prevent vapor going through the sides which we will be seeing the next so this is the main difference here otherwise uh, it will have the same arrangement like uh, uh, fixed roof tank like a uh, and the, each tank has got a staircase which are, anyway it is there and the same level measuring devices and all these things again here, here it will have a radar type nowadays they don't go for this uh, float type it's a very old arrangement there's another uh, inside it is giving in more detail of the floating roof here uh, whatever the water collected on the float because it's a very huge tank so during rainy season water may get accumulated and due to its own weight they can sink so to avoid that the water has to be removed so that is done through flexible uh, hose arrangement and it is taken out in case any uh, the oil is coming through that that means the hose is ruptured so they have to repair that so that is the point otherwise the water will go into the tank and this arrangement ladder is it will go along with the uh, float so that uh, as the level goes down this will come down as the level comes up this will go this that type of arrangement so i was telling about the seal this is called the rim seal it is on the periphery and uh, the access uh, hatch manhole is there and the tank shell anyway it will be there for any other uh, tank Now, oh, this is again the floating roof tank. It gives more in detail. The whatever the flexible hose you are telling, I had shown, it is uh, given here. And uh, this particular arrangement has got a sump, the, this one, because uh, the tanks can have a straight bottom, uh, straight uh, flat bottom, or it can have some uh, conical, this one. In the center, there will be sump. So water, uh, what gets collected into the sump, from there they can take it out. That is the whole purpose of that. And uh, this flexible hose also is uh, rainwater uh, for to drain the rainwater is provided here. In addition to that, uh, you have uh, this is the seal portion. It is shown on the left side. Uh, the bladder type thing is there it will go up and down along the float so it will prevent vapor going out of this this is very important that is the main purpose of this uh, floating tank and uh, of course there are different uh, design aspects of it so that is how it is and uh, here on the top you have gauge hatch radar hatch these are all to see the level inside the tank and access hatch rolling ladder as he was telling it will move along with the float and uh, this uh, swing check wall because the rainwater will get collected into the this one like a bottom top also it will get collected in the center from there it comes out and uh, panel support like and another important thing is if in case when the level is too low it may touch the bottom which we, they don't want so the legs are provided below that the tire float cannot uh, go down if it goes down it will be very very difficult to bring it back so that is why this arrangement is given by default it will remain that position it cannot go to the bottom of the, the float cannot go to go to the bottom of the tank and in addition to that the emergency roof drain also is provided here 
So that is all de depending on the uh, design. Okay. So in the left side also, you, uh, you have that pump product uh, conversion here also you can take, or uh, you can go through the uh, refer in for the rainwater. And uh, here again, this flow, particular type of floating roof has got a um, PVRV, that's a, whatever the pressure is coming, it has to breathe. So this arrangement is uh, provided here. So it will take care of the pressure buildup or uh, this one. And uh, on the bottom, uh, the, the blanketing provision is given here. Nitrogen will uh, get pumped whenever the pressure goes down because there is any pump out is taking place. Nitrogen will enter and uh, uh, normalize the pressure. In case the pressure is increasing, it will uh, get released through the wall. That is how it is shown. <laughs> so now, this is another type which is having fixed as well as the floating roof. So inside there will be a floating roof, uh, a floating arrangement, and above that there will be a conical arrangement. So this is another uh, type. This uh, floats on oil of specific gravity between 0.7 to 1. Normally, uh, they rise or fall with the oil level, and two possibilities can occur oil leak or a rainwater accumulation for these tanks. So, there are other arrangements like the double deck uh, roofs, they are better in uh, provision. The airspace between the two decks provides an effective insulation against the solar radiation. This is important because the products sometimes can, can get uh, degraded. So this uh, prevent, arrangement prevents. This is the floating cum, uh, fixed cum floating roof uh, tank it, it described in more detail. This is the PVRV provided here. And this is the manhole so that it is uh, ventured out. So this gives a more uh, clear uh, picture here. Here also you have a uh, receiving line, inter-transfer line. All these things are there. So whatever is given the other tanks, it is all applicable here. Plus it has got an additional facility. That's a main thing. Okay, about the instrumentation, because the tanks have to be monitored for uh, how much material is there. They have to see the level and also the temperature and other things. Especially for the level, uh, radar type is used nowadays. So many refineries have gone into the radar. Otherwise, normal procedure, the older days procedure is there is a hatch at the top. You open it and uh, put the uh, dip and see what is the level uh, difference with that they used to calculate and it has to be done it will used to be done manually even today it is happening but generally they have gone for the more automated one because uh, tanks are uh, so every time man has to climb and other things a lot of accident problems safety issues are there so that's why they avoid it plus in addition to there is a local display also available so whoever is uh, visiting the plan, uh, tank area, you can see uh, exactly what is the level. So you can uh, reconfirm with the uh, control room and see what are the level, uh, any changes there. So that is one facility provided. And uh, in addition to that, what is the pressure in the tank? Because they have to see the pressure differential also and temperature also. These are all the three things they have to check and uh, all this in information is now uh, uh, given to control room from there they will be monitoring how much has to be pumped or how much has to be uh, pumped out or pumped in all these things will be part of it and this particular diagram shows the draining part because they were telling the from the tank a lot of uh, water uh, will can be drained so due to the water, rain or even during 
intermediate uh, products they may have water or whatever it is even crude tanks they normally bring a lot of uh, water from the oil fields so they uh, crude cannot be directly pumped into the uh, uh, refinery for processing they have to remove the water so settling time is given and uh, that water is uh, drained so lot may a lot a uh, lot of quantity of water is uh, getting generated in this process so along with that it may bring some uh, sludge also the sludge is nothing but uh, oil plus water so because uh, uh, due to the, uh, <coughs> they get mixed so oil cannot be just uh, separated so that also comes so that is uh, taken to uh, different uh, location for separating the oil and other things that we are not uh, covering here but uh, generally they uh, this water drained water goes to the oil uh, whatever it is some from that it is the wastewater treatment plant it goes and they process it so th there is a network here through that the water is coming and uh, another thing is whatever the because the areas are huge uh, during rain a lot of water is getting generated outside not only on the tank in the outside also so the storm water the rain water need not go to the waste water treatment plant because uh, no point so that water is separately taken to the storm water pond and uh, that they uh, store it and use it again for fire water and other facilities or uh, or uh, for unit operation also after processing so that is a separately uh, uh, system by itself because it water cannot be just uh, allowed to go east so this is the type of arrangement yeah, available here <clears throat> now we are going more into the details of putting a roof it is a single deck uh, pontoon roof double deck pontoon roof these are all the different types are available designed as per apa 650 guidelines and uh, fan roof uh, shall not be used as these are all unsafe. So we will not, will not go into that detail. So they will follow as per the, they will consult as per the 650, uh, AP 650 guideline and uh, operate. And similarly for a fixed roof tanks, a cone roof, a cone type or dome shape, both are available nowadays. And fixed roof uh, tanks for uh, light products, like a motor spirit. Motor spirit is nothing but uh, petrol or gasoline. And breathing into a new clean balloon is not acceptable because a petrol reacts with the new clean. So that's why they avoid. And even for, I was mentioning about the gauging also, that uh, uh, nylon rope is not allowed because it causes uh, static electricity. Even the gauge pipe also is non-static. Uh, type so a lot of uh, design aspects are involved in that so coming back to this fixed roof tank so is a cone roof uh, cone type or dome shaped maybe pressurized to a few inches of water they operate at a very low pressure and the breather wall or maybe provided with the fuel gas or inert gas for blanketing which i was explaining earlier to prevent oxygen or moisture in this because moisture also can come by the uh, atmospheric air. atmospheric or low pressure tanks are designed as per uh, apa 650 or apa 620 here there is a slight uh, flexibility there based on the based on the requirement they follow this uh, apa code and next is a uh, fixed uh, come floating roof tanks is uh, these are all with or without uh, nitrogen blanketing they have fixed roof or a floating roof i had shown the diagram earlier used for products having very stringent water content specifications like atf and other products sensitive to oxygen like uh, light intermediate feed tanks uh, especially for atf atf is aviation uh, turbo fuel which are used for uh, planes there one of the main uh, 
uh, stipulation is uh, uh, presence of water. It has to be almost nil. The reason is uh, when the plane goes uh, uh, higher elevation, they go to a cryogenic uh, uh, minus uh, 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 20, minus 30 dairy range. So there, if water is available, then water freezes and it can choke the pipe and the plane can go for a crash. So that's why this point is very important there. So that's why a lot of care is taken. And for the general points, selection of the type of roof, it normally depends on the ambient conditions and uh, product handle. Ambient conditions are uh, your temperature, pressure. They see the uh, overall uh, ambient condition for the past 15 years or 20 years. And based on that, these are all decided. And the product handle. The tanks used to <coughs> store finished uh, aviation products. Finished aviation, gasoline, or turbine fuel shall be floating group, which I put to avoid any entry of water into product. Where product degradation due to air or mix, uh, moisture increases the problem, and fixed roof tanks are used, they should be provided with inert gas blanket. This is where the inert gas blanketing, because all uh, tanks may not have, because uh, constructing the double dome type is uh, quite costly, so they go for this type of net gas. Net gas is nothing. Normally, it is uh, nitrogen. In case uh, fuel gas is available, we can use it. But fuel gas should not uh, uh, contaminate or mix with the hydrocarbon. That is the thing. That's why normally, but in the product plant, uh, refinery inside the plant, they use gas because there is no problem there. Here, there is a issue. Nitrogen blanketing for internal floating roof tanks or fixed roof tanks should be considered for storing hazardous petroleum products like benzene. Here also, the bigger benzene, once it comes out, uh, comes to atmosphere, it is a carcinogenic uh, material, so it can cause problem to human beings and other uh, living beings. So that's why they prevent to prevent that blanketing is done. This is also there. The ambient temperature. The statistics shall be taken for the past 15 years based on that because the products as the temperature increases the uh, uh, vapor pressure increases so they will lose loss of uh, hydrocarbon is more so that's why they have to take consideration of all these things then about the tank bottom bottom may have conical shape or inverted cone shape this is called apex dome because uh, slightly it is inverted from there uh, water is on material is taken to they know so that is all possible tanks used to store fixed aviation turbine fuel shallow bottom cone downwards towards the center with the sump or at the center of the tank bottom and the siphon element this is to basically to drain water nothing else then outside of the pipe shall be Epoxy coated. This is for uh, to prevent uh, corrosion. Epoxy coating is done for corrosion to prevent corrosion. And location tanks may be above ground or elevated ground or underground. It can be anywhere. And, uh, here we are not talking about the spheres. They are, they are separately they are taken for a very gas as well, uh, gaseous uh, material like a propane, ethylene, uh, uh, compressed natural these are all there. We are not talking about the, we are talking here only about the oils, uh, liquids. So in case of underground storage tanks, protection to the external surfaces because, uh, are to be given because they can be subjected to a lot of corrosion issues. So um, a lot of design aspects are to be followed. Plus they have to have the coating and uh, the cathodic protection, all these things have to follow. So that's why it is written cathodic protection should be provided where high standard of uh, protection is uh, provided. Or nowadays, impressed current is also there. So they supply measured quantity of uh, current so to prevent uh, uh, 
Короче, ай не си ще. So the tank capacity is defined based on the whether they are atmospheric storage tank or low pressure storage tank. The design aspects are all given. And the risk analysis for the surrounding area should preferably be undertaken while constructing the large capacity tanks beyond uh, 20,000 cubic meters. So in any case, risk analysis has to be taken, but here it is a very uh, uh, stressing on that so the reference is given in uh, you have to refer why is this standard 118 that is on uh, layouts of, for oil and gas installations so that has to be uh, strictly followed then corrosion allowance because uh, corrosion is a factor over a period of time it eats the metal so when you design it cannot be designed for the exact so they give additional allowance because the, the tank has to be used for maybe say 10 years or 20 years whatever it is so that in that period it may lose some thickness so that is a way to compensate that initially they give more this one that is the corrosion allowance so at the end of the period it may not the damage may not even though damage is there the tank may, can be safe so that is a corrosion allowance should be specified uh, at the time of uh, as per the design uh, depending on the nature of petroleum products if it's corrosive material definitely corrosion allowance has to be more okay. but uh, moment you do that uh, cost also increases so both ways they will be seen where they will have to strike a balance so uh, the bottom this one I have given uh, galvanic uh, cathodic protection, how it is done, and the impressed uh, current uh, cathodic protection, how it is done. Both are uh, provided here. Uh, nowadays, they go for this impressed current only. This is a very uh, old uh, setup. Then, about the ladders and handle, handles. Before going, coming to that uh, that uh, tank upper tennis is this is one particular term which is uh, used in the OIZ standard. I uh, give the explanation also. This uh, nothing is uh, nothing but uh, auxiliary physical components that support the function of a pipeline during its operation. The examples are also given. That is the drains, vents, vaults, manholes. Is all part of this particular uh, aspect? Uh, it can be above ground or below ground or prone to corrosion. As per the ISO standard, but these are all part of the structure that is installed to assist installation to provide access or protection. So, with this uh, background, we'll see the ladders and the handles. Individual uh, tank can be shall be provided with the access to the roof because uh, now it is a spiral uh, staircase. It, is, it cannot be straight. It is very difficult to climb. Right there. So spiral it will uh, arrangement will be there. And uh, platform on the top there will be a platform with railing should be provided. And uh, in between if the tank height is very high, in between for every uh, five meters or six meters they have to have landing area so that is how it is constructed so as per the standards platform with railing should be provided from the top of the stairway to gauge well and the roof ladder on uh, floating roof tanks non-sparking or self-leveling type rolling ladder because the ladder will roll which i had shown earlier will go along with it and the stairs should be made of grating uh, it cannot be plate because plate are so uh, it can uh, corrode so it, it can be dangerous so it has to be grating because grating this chance is very less all staircases uh, shall have resting or landing platform which i said over every five meters there has to be a landing manuals number of manuals shall depend on the diameter of the tank again it is all decided with the epa 650 code minimum of one flush uh, type uh, clean out manual should be provided for tanks under dirty services. 
as for the drains on the left side you can see the i had seen uh, shown earlier there is a sump from there pipe is uh, taken and here it is the welded pipe straight and flange is outside the tank here not inside so from there they connected a valve pump and all so we can pump out that is how it is so you see uh, first is the trap this is the bottom sump horizontal pipe and shell and uh, base this is the arrangement so the liquid will be here so with this weight itself it will just come out so that is how it is a very simple arrangement so the bottom drains are provided in all tanks for uh, draining water and also for empty water the tank for cleaning because uh, when you when the tank goes for cleaning entire material has to be removed so this is the bottommost level available uh, uh, location available so they have to use this these are all used for draining water and uh, hydro uh, hydro test or in initial flushing during a startup operation these are all uh, Coming under APS six fifty four uh, for det uh, under uh, details of such things. At apex down tank bottom shall have one drain connection located at the lowest point. That is the cone vertical inverted conical this one. So that obviously the tip of the cone uh, cone uh, happens to be the bottommost section. From there, uh, drain it is drain. And uh, for floating roof drains, maximum rainfall rate on hourly basis for the past 15 years uh, should be considered. Because then only they will know. They have to design the uh, diameter of the pipe based on that. Then uh, such drains pass uh, the design rainfall when roof is uh, resting on the lowest position. The primary roof uh, drain system shall be closed type using uh, pipe and swing joints because the hose can be uh, having different joints and uh, they can rotate in any direction but the out external oil water because they're all immersed in uh, hydrocarbon so that hydrocarbon should not enter the this pipe so they are having the ceiling arrangement also is a special type of uh, arrangement they use it then uh, inlet for this uh, drain shall have swing type check wall because uh, to prevent product from flowing into roof if pipe drain leaks because from bottom also it can go out so that's why all these arrangements are uh, provided an emergency roof, roof drain is provided for a floating roof tank to take care of a drainage problem and drainage of total water in case of plugging of normal roof drain. So unless there is a problem, they will not use this actually. It's an emergency arrangement. Then a dip hatch, as it was saying, this is used for the, the for sampling, for gauging the height of the liquid in a tank and to collect samples for testing. Uh, gauge hatch has, shall be non-sparking and aligned with the non-sparking material and self-closing storage tank having pressure poses a problem because if the ta uh, tank is under having pressure if you open the hatch uh, vapor will start coming so it is not good for the person who is standing there so there are limitations so for such tanks provide uh, this one slot at the uh, dipping device up to 300 mm the water gauge is provided so there the sampling is done separately in a so for such tank which are uh, having a pressure they cannot just open the hatch and take the sand that is the point here <coughs> operating pressures beyond this need appro appropriate uh, instrumentation with uh, redundancy because uh, single uh, instrument is never given they keep two <coughs> sometimes it is for very critical ones they may have three also so because the, as the redundancy increases even if one fails other one is there to fall upon is there because depending on only one can have serious problems sometimes 
these are all coming as part of the functional uh, safety. So this is not the scope here. So I'm not getting into that. Uh, gauge well type is provided for all the all type of tanks with slots. This should be uh, this should have continuous uh, contact by means of slits with bottom plate of the tank. Continuous contact makes the tank safer with respect to static charge. This is very very important for uh, the hydro government tanks. Uh, static charge. In fact, I have given the case study two out of which one is for the static uh, charge only. Uh, which we'll be seeing later. Continuation and uh, acts as a support for the gauge well type. And walkway on the roof because people can have to walk on the roof for inspection as well as to take uh, uh, measurement, uh, gauging, and all those things. So that's why walkway is provided. With the handrail on the roof of the tank is provided to facilitate inspection, checking of vents, flame arrest, etc. Flame arrestor. Like given the left side, the, how does it look? This is how the flame arrestor looks. This uh, prevents the flame going out. <clears throat> then, uh, as for the vents, there are open vents. Open vents shall be of gooseneck type, covered with the four to eight mesh screen, because uh, uh, to prevent uh, birds or insects entering. So that's why the mesh screen is uh, provided there. Again, this is all covered under APA 2000 for wind sizing. And the basic guidelines are the maximum and minimum ambient temperatures, vapor pressure of the product at operating design pressure at temperature, maximum pumping in and out rates, blending components likely to be handled in the tank. These are the basic guidelines under which events are uh, provided. And uh, as for the breather wall, the diagram is given here. This is the type of arrangement provided. Earlier also we had seen. Actually, this is uh, mounted on that. So this can breathe in or breathe out based on the uh, pumping out or pumping in. These walls are in the blanketed uh, uh, tanks designed as per as APS 50. For low pressure tanks, breather wall required shall be provided as per APS 620. So, why this is coming again and again? Because the stipulations are different. And if they do differently, uh, sometime or other, it will have a serious consequence. That is why they have to be very uh, clear on this. The tank breathes, breathes in air and the tank pressure is lower. And the uh, atmospheric pressure and breathes out and the tank pressure is greater than that as well. That is how it is. But this arrangement is there for the hydrocarbons where it does not interact with the hydrocarbon or uh, reacts to the hydrocarbon. For other tanks, anyway, I had told, blanketing is there. <laughs> pressure and uh, vacuum relief valves, that is PVRV, it is called. This is the arrangement shown here on the left side. Provided on the cone roof tanks, usually have 20% accumulation. Under full relieving conditions, the design pressure or vacuum in the tank should not exceed. So PVRVs are as per uh, APA 520 uh, guidelines. Then breather vents and uh, or uh, flame arrest are known to fail through the formation of crystalline waxy because if continuously hydrocarbon is going in and out, that, that may choke the uh, PVRV. So they may form ice sometimes in extreme climatic conditions. They may uh, block the diaphragm, so the diaphragm may not function all those things. A lot, lot of maintenance uh, issues are there in that. So for such a material, uh, the, the tanks having handling such material, the PVRV is not recommended. That is what it is. You have to go to a different type of arrangement. Blanketed tanks, breathing in will be 
from the blanking gas system. Appropriate uh, control system or wall is provided for supply of blanketing gas. At, uh, blanketing gas is nothing but nitrogen at constant pressure. So it will keep the tank under constant pressure. The tank is provided with a safety wall by way of lift disc or uh, lift disc or diaphragm or any other device, gauge hatch and other manuals shall be of gas state uh, construct, uh, construction to prevent uh, uh, air ingress in the system. Here, uh, as for the instrumentation for the level, level is very, very important for a tank, especially. Uh, tank shall be provided with the with at least two numbers of level instruments, which I said earlier. On the left side, you can see this will be the type of arrangement here. Here, they have shown the data type automatic overfill provision. So, when the tank is filling up, it will definitely show. And there will be alarms also along with that. So, that will come in the control room. So, people will have to take uh, action immediately. On the right side, also, the below. Well, I got the diagram for uh, the uh, uh, elaborate instrumentation. This is how the setup normally is provided. There can be variations everywhere. And uh, here you have automatic uh, overfill uh, preven uh, prevention system because there is a shutoff wall provided, which is not shown here. So it shuts off. So even if it is a pumping or pump out, it will not allow, it will just shut off, stop the pump. Right? A lot of control arrangements are provided in these things. So this is this increases the safety of the tank operation, nothing else. So these are all interconnected with the control room and the message is coming here, all those things. So as for the temperature, the run down temperatures are likely to be higher than 100 degrees. Remote temperature indicator with alarm are provided in addition to local indicators. And for tank capacity higher than 5,000 cubic meter, a minimum of two numbers of local temperature indicators should be located within 500 mm above the inlet and outlet nozzle as not to sense the direct heat of the coil. There are as per the design guidelines. So uh, during construction, they have to ensure all those things. I think it's an important aspect to avoid this static electricity problem. All the storage tanks, including its roof, and all metal connections should be electrically continuous and effectively earthed. So they connect it and take it through wire and earth it. So that uh, static electricity problem is uh, very much uh, uh, reduced. Yeah. In this connection, I can uh, tell you, uh, in the petrol, mo most of you must have visited petrol pump. In the petrol pump, when he's uh, putting the petrol, there is a nozzle provided. The nozzle, you would have seen the uh, uh, wire. So that is nothing but for earthing. So continuously it is earth. The reason is, whenever petrol is uh, poured, it can cause electricity. And that is why petrol has to be poured at a very low level, not for the high level. If you keep the, if you pour the petrol at a high level, there can be any static electricity forming and it can cause fire. So in, even if that happens also, if the static electricity uh, is removed or uh, grounded by that fire, that is what I'm trying to tell. So there is an example I'm giving you. Same way for storage tanks also, this is made continuous and grounded so that uh, this problem is avoided at all objects. In case of floating roof tanks, stainless steel uh, shunts may be provided across the peripheral seals to ensure a thing of uh, floating roof. So, uh, different arrangements are there. there. Alternately, the pontoon ladder and shell, uh, the shell of the floating roof tank shall be continuously bonded. Bonded means they are electrically connected. Regularly continuous with copper cable and the shell shall be independently etched. 
This is as per the OSD uh, recommended practices 110. Of, uh, that is exclusively for static electricity. Then painting and numbering. The uh, tanks are huge, and uh, so they have to be in uh, the tank number. Though other details have to be mentioned at different uh, locations, especially 120 dairy uh, apart to mention. So from any direction, one can see the details of the tank from at, from distance. That is important. So the what are the details? Tank number, safe filling height, reference height, all these things, uh, details will be um, uh, mentioned in the tank up front. Painted on the tank to avoid operating errors. Because okay, the control rooms will have all these details. Operators also will have all the details. In case they don't have references already ready-made available on the tank itself. That is a thing. For all weight oil uh, product uh, tanks, heat reflecting and self-cleaning paint is recommended. This is to prevent uh, air uh, this one, uh, heat absorption to the tank to reduce the uh, temperature raise or to prevent temperature raise. Uh, so they use the EP, AP coat uh, just to paint. These are all the uh, recommendations. Numbers should be painted at three point positions, one to three support. Said it should be clearly visible out from outside the dike or uh, roadside. Here, the dike is along the periphery of the tank. Uh, there is a boundary wall. It is supposed to, in case the tank leaks, also uh, it, it can take 1.1 times of the tank uh, total capacity. So, hydrocarbon will not come out of the deck, it will be contained. From there, of course, they can uh, pump out. That is the main thing. And whatever the pipelines are there, they'll come through the deck and uh, the operation will be done outside the tank normally, not inside the tank area. Then uh, recommended size of letters is a uh, half meter high. And the 15 mm thick. These are all the regulations given here. Then at the foot of the staircase, each tank, uh, tank number, safe filling head, all the, these are all given, already I have shown. Next one is insulation. If uh, Necessary insulation will normally be provided for heat conservation. It, it, not for all the tanks, wherever it is required. Uh, two meters high insulation should uh, around the tanks having surface uh, uh, high surface temperature is provided for personal protection because people will be moving around the tank. In case the tank say the temperature is say 80 degrees, so if somebody Touches, he may get injured. That is why this provision is provided, basically for personal protection. That is also possible. And patch insulation may also be provided on the shelf along with the spectacle style. And uh, decent consideration for tank form manifold. So, general. So, the drain sum, uh, how it looks like, it is uh, given here, the photo is given here on the left side. About the dike wall, already I told, dike wall can be of earth or masonry or stone, whatever is possible. The purpose of tank dike is to contain the petroleum product in the event of the tank rupture. This is covered under OHD standard 118. Then tank form drains. Tank form drains or spillages or rainwater shall be routed either to IU water sewage or storm water. In case very heavy rain is there, that time this uh, drain will be open to storm water because uh, if it goes to oily water uh, route, it cannot handle so much of uh, water. So system will get choked. 
so that's why they take it to storm water from the storm water uh, channel also is connected to the system there they separate the oil and take out so that is only that is only for very heavy rains not otherwise normally it is through oily water sewer only <laughs> provision should exist for a diversion valves out, located outside the tank uh, dike in case of clear rain water the same shall be uh, diverted to open channel should a tank rupture the contents shall remain within the burn wall and gradually be diverted to oily water sewer in case of high wax content product or uh, air uh, high pour crude if the uh, crude is waxy then a tank oil drain should be uh, could be separated and pumped to crude or slop tanks because uh, they may ch again choke the drains the drains uh, lines that is why this arrangement is provided depending on the capacity a group of tanks can be considered they may have is the three tanks together four tanks together as a group and can have the common facility that is also possible a separator cellar steam heating arrangement and auto start or stop for pump can be provided for so for waxy stuff is again as per the standard 109 blow down and sewer system then as for the fire protection separately wise the deals with the fire protection so that is not that's why it is not given here but otherwise all the tanks have elaborate the fire waiting facilities <coughs> the details of the fire protection system they are covered under uh, the standard 116 and 117 also where a large tank forms are involved especially in refineries or crude terminals or marketing installations in thick populated areas other government detectors are located in selected tank forms because uh, if any gas leak is there because these are all mostly unmanned or sparsely manned areas because no one stays there so they have to detect any hydrocarbon so that's why detectors are located at different locations uh, they are all connected to the control room as to fire control room as well as uh, uh, operating control room from there they detect any uh, leak is there they go to the spot and uh, uh, correct the situation that is why in addition to that these areas have beacons also from there also you get to know uh, the three types of beacons one is the blue is uh, toxic amber is uh, amber color is a uh, hydrocarbon and red is uh, fire so this is uh, this can be even uh, seen 1 uh, km even 2 km distances so easily one can see any what is happening there so this is another uh, type which is not covered in, the, in this particular presentation anyway and uh, manifolds for safe considerations number of initial and uh, inlet and outlet connections the tank shell is kept a minimum because they don't want to have more connections inside so this reduces the number of flanges walls close to the tank in case of many lines they take a single line out from the tank from there outside the deck and branch it out and do the operation so it is easy and safe also to handle that's how it is tank manifolds shall be located outside the dike area the floor underneath is paved because if oil leaks it will go in, into the ground which is not again acceptable is a big environmental issue so that's why they it has to be paved even if it leaks also it can go to the collecting system oil water sewer system as is how it is and the crude and other tanks where water contamination can lead to irrit upsets additional suction at two elevations is provided so that top outlet can be lined up the other top section is what i was telling you top section bottom section it is for that reason only alternatively floating section shall be installed and uh, after tank settlement a depression 
is normally formed on the tank pad along the circumference. This should be the same should be effectively made up with proper slope. So they take it uh, design in such a way that this is does not happen. Where large settlement is anticipated, use flexible joints or spring supports for piping of uh, this. Okay. Heaters. Tank uh, heating can be accomplished uh, either by steam heating or electric heating or uh, hot oil circulation. So direct heating, they cannot, uh, it is achieved by uh, steam coil or uh, they use the thermic fluid that, that hot liquid is going inside and coming out. So in both ways. But uh, steam coil is normally uh, prevented because if any uh, rupture is there, then the steam condensate can go inside the tank and cause uh, problems. That's why normally they, it is not a preferable uh, method, actually. Then uh, design uh, fuels using fire burners are not recommended because obviously they are very unsafe. We got naked fly flavors involved there. Then uh, design criteria. The tank heater shall be designed to hold the product at the specific uh, storage uh, temperature. Uh, especially, this is uh, especially for the very viscous liquids, they get uh, congealed. So, the tank has to be kept at uh, 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 required temperature. So, for that, you need the heater. That's the reason. And a tank is filled up to safe link height. Uh, that is, the tank a heater shall be designed to hold the product at a specific storage temperature when tank is filled up to the safe link height. Because otherwise, if you lose the temperature, pumping out again will be a big problem because it can get congealed. So it has to be more risk, uh, this one, fluid. For a design calculation, it is necessary to specify average wind velocity and um, minimum ambient temperature over extended period of time. This is all as per the calculation. And the tanks also have wind cutters. So that is part of the design, actually. Then uh, steam heating. Manway heaters uh, consist of two bundle, usually a hairpin type, that is U-type. So it goes inside and comes back. And uh, steam is introduced, and with that, it, it gets heated. That is how the arrangement uh, is there. So many heater shall be designed so that uh, its removal can be done without the requirement of person entering the tank. So uh, online also is possible. So such provisions have to be made. In the steam coils should have no flange connection inside the tank. This is very important. When the other side, this one on the tank also, I said, they don't want to keep any flange joint inside because flange joints are the weakest uh, locations where it can leak. Then it, uh, uh, maintenance of the pro is a tank, uh, that is the shutdown, emptying out, it's a very big process. So to avoid such things, they don't keep any flange inside the tank. So this is the reason. Provision should exist in condensate outlet lines to check for oil because in case any tank with tube is ruptured, they should be able to, by checking the sample or the water sample, they'll know hydrocarbon is leaking means it is, that oil is ruptured. Immediately they have to replace or go for maintenance. Gradient of the coil tube bundle inside the tank should be such that condensate accumulation is avoided. This is another thing. Otherwise, it will start hammering because it, it due to two phase two phase uh, flow. So steam and the condensate will try to push together, and uh, it will cause a uh, vibration as a hammering, and it can get damaged. So that's the reason. Then electric heating also is uh, possible in some location based on the requirement and availability. It's one of the more uh, 
courses of shell can be provided. However, the classification and terminal rating of electric tracing should be verified before application. So, as per the design, they have to do it. Electric conduits and cabling should conform to classification areas for electrical installation. Separate is the norms. Oil, uh, hot oil system, which I said, in case of uh, fuel oil, LSHS, uh, bitumen, etc., steam leak in the tank could lead to boil over. So, this is one of the main concerns because they are already under high temperature, uh, good amount of temperature, and there, if condensate is entering, that means it will cause boil over and overflow will take place. So they, they, it will overflow from the tank. So that's why it is avoided. For this reason, hot oil heating can also be considered for such cases. This would consist of fire heater located in remote area. Pump takes suction from the tank containing heating oil, that is a dough thumb, and circulates through the heater. Only, but these cases are very, very specific so, for example, it is given. It is not a general one, but where it is required, there they go for such arrangements. Again, isolation and sampling facilities are to be provided at each tank to check leaks, obviously. Uh, heating oil tank uh, shall be monitored with the indicators and along because it has to be a closely monitored one because you are using a heater. Hide heat. And uh, as for the mixers, because they have to do the, uh, 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 since the tanks are so huge, the mixing has to be done to keep the material homogeneous. So different types of mixers are there, uh, propeller type or jet type, all those things. So the mixers are used for blending also because uh, you must have homogeneous material for correct uh, specification uh, when you do the blending. So mixers are used in uh, most of the tanks. Though, uh, though line blending is preferred because normally line blending is the preferred method, but the tanks also has they have to be used. Final corrections may have to be done in tanks. Mixing is also required to avoid stratification of heavy oil products, also to accommodate downgraded uh, products. Seasonal quality changes as well as for pipeline interfaces during cross-country transfer. So for these considerations, uh, this mixing is happening. The blending of Class A product into class C product by transfer should not be resorted to. It's very, very important. Class A, under class A product, say uh, petrol is coming, and under class C, the very heavy material. If you try to mix, it will really be at work. In uh, many years before, there was a problem in uh, one of the states of India. Um, People were using kerosene. They were using the pump stove. And the pump stove, at that time, the uh, pump stove used to get exploded. There's some people lost their lives also. And the way in investigation, it was found that petrol got mixed with the kerosene. So petrol being very highly flammable, it just exploded at cost the incident. So that is why. There's an example I'm telling. So the Class A product and Class C product cannot be uh, uh, mix, mixing. So clear cut uh, this one's out there. How to do it? So they have to do that. It's a very, very critical aspect. If at all someone wants to use it, then the tank has to be reclassified. And uh, in, incidentally, this particular uh, type of thing, in one of the case two st uh, study, it is there. It, of course, that is for the with reference to the st static electricity. There, 
the reason is uh, it, it was a gasoline uh, uh, tank they emptied out the tank and uh, tried to use it in diesel service that time this accident took place so there are real aspects uh, safety aspects behind this <clears throat> type of uh, mixers bedding may be carried out by side entry propeller mixers different uh, methods are there. normally it is side entry or jet mixer mixers or electro mixers in general electro mixers shall be preferred for uh, blending and uh, outlet of elect uh, electric shall be located away from tank shell to avoid the direct impingement jet mixing shall not be con uh, considered for high viscous uh, products and products with uh, high water content because uh, the, since the velocity is very high the mixture of water gets uh, mixed so it will form it will be very difficult to break that uh, emulsion that's so why in such cases jet mixers are not used then uh, selection of uh, type of mixer should be based on economics effectiveness and safety of operation and mixing steam in operation should never break the surface of the liquid this is another thing this is in the second case where what i was mentioning to this happened so it formed a static electricity there then uh, now we are entering into tank operation. This uh, left side whatever is given is the size of inlet pipe versus the maximum flow it can take. So this is a reference. Entry on a floating roof is permitted only if all the following conditions are fulfilled. So these are all the uh, standard operating procedures, part of guidelines. Definitely, this has to be followed. Roof is at, at least halfway to the top gas test shows no presence of hps so it is supposed to wear the uh, personal uh, hps detector and is below 10 percent of the lower exposure limit now nowadays this is further reduced anyway that uh, is this still says but now uh, to be on the safer side they even keep five percent only okay that is a part Floating roof is the level and uh, free of oil and the excess water. One man is standby at the type of at the top of platform with a canister mask or breathing apparatus. In case he falls, he, he can rescue that person. Those are all the arrangements uh, provided. A lifeline with the safety belt is used for the van going on the roof because. You don't know the type of the roof in case it is uh, corroded inside you won't know we can go down so if he goes down there is no chance of saving him so to avoid that he is supposed to wear a lifeline and safety belt so that he can be rescued this is the main thing and the other end of a line held by a standby at the top of the car so that's why the standby person also is required there. The tank is not under uh, receipt or uh, delivery because uh, when in this ideal condition, that time they should uh, inspect. No gauging or sampling or tank should be undertaken during thunder or uh, hail storms because again, it's static electricity is a problem there. Uh, flow velocity at a tank should not exceed one meter per second unless until the inlet is completely submerged so this is another uh, stipulation there and uh, here uh, the maximum fill, uh, minimum filling heights uh, are given here this is the floating roof tank and uh, here it is not very vis clearly visible but uh, this is the minimum and the maximum filling height. This is this should operate within this range only. Cannot go beyond that. And uh, uh, this one rim seal is already shown here. Right. 
then uh, next point is the con uh, conductive footwear should be worn because uh, to prevent uh, static electricity while gauging or sampling or uh, taking temperature leather soles and uh, or electrically con uh, conducting rubber soles must be worn nylon ropes shall not be used for lowering sample bottles or uh, to avoid static electricity issues common sources of leaks and spills is a mobile in mobile storage tanks such as uh, diesel fuel tanks used for construction or machinery that is uh, if that is to be done they have to dig a small pit near the construct or construct a temporary dike around the tank and use that then if a tank has a uh, internal heating coil do not charge steam into the coil unless the coil is fully submerged that is the inside the liquid uh, fluid level should be above the steam guard generally they should charge the steam guard otherwise what will happen if steam is already charged the liquid is below that when the liquid comes up it may damage the coil so that is a reason monitor the condensate from the coil for oil content in case of large tank forms effective communication is essential so always if normally they have the walkie talkies with that they communicate plus road hooters on road side also there so people know if any problem is available operate uh, side entry mixers only when liquid is above the blades again this is like a steam coil only the side entry mixers shall be maybe designed to facilitate to add packing that is they should be able to maintain from outside not from entering the inside then uh, whenever saline water is used saline water is corrosive you must remember uh, for testing of tank or uh, an oxygen scavenger or a corrosion inhibitor or a other mixer of chemicals can be used to prevent uh, or suppress the corrosion effect on that while cleaning the tanks care should be taken to avoid generation of uh, static electricity for this reason steaming of gassy tanks and cleaning of tanks by means of gas oil spray should be avoided the instructions and water watching is preferred in such cases so that they fill it up the water so then there is no issue on that then uh, now we are coming to loading and unloading facilities here uh, so the from the tank they pump it uh take section from the tank and uh, pump out for distribution either to tank trucks or uh, wagon loading or uh, cross country pipeline whatever it is so this is how it is so that is what we are talking about and here elaborated uh, instrumentation is there how much uh, pumping is taking place what is the flow rate what is the temperature pressure and all those things Where everything has even every drop of oil has to be hydrogen has to be accounted for, and any loss is there, there also has to be accounted. So then only, because everything is ultimately percolating to money, so they cannot afford to lose. And they, of course, I, environmental aspects are there. They are there is a separate issue. So now for the loading and unloading, pumps uh, locate the. Uh, as for the pumps locate the pumps in exclusively paved area with the drainage facilities this is the as per the design aspect choose uh, pumps with the flat uh, characteristic curves uh, already stipulated in the apa code and uh, this is to avoid uh, vari uh, variation in pressure leading to kick or hammering so in our indian concept is a context they say hammering in other places they say kick whatever it is in a header or hoses once it happens it can damage the gasket of the flange and it may leak so that is why it is to be avoided loading pumps shall be provided Loading pumps shall be provided 
with uh, additional explosion uh, proof switches located at the gantry to switch off the pump in case of emergency. So, next point is uh, these are all the state uh, statements. There's nothing to explain here. They have to be uh, there in place. Have a dedicated pump for each product. Common uh, common standby pump may be used for MS, APTA, or kerosene for HSD uh, or uh, LDO or fuel oil, etc. Ensure provision of uh, positive blinding facility because this is another very important aspect as per the terminal operation is concerned because all the tanks are interconnected and they are crisscrossing. So anything, any combination. A permutation combination is possible and operation is also made flexible but that uh, blending facility isolation facility should be 101 percent perfect otherwise uh, uh, anything can happen because one from one tank it may material can go to other tank or it may contaminate all sort of problems once it happens it is become it will be very very difficult to uh, control the situation or even identify. So that is why this blending facility is a very, very important aspect as far as the uh, terminal operations are concerned, uh, concerned. So the common standby shall not be used between class A and class B or C or class B and class C products. Again, the same thing. This has to be again kept in mind while doing this blending uh, and pumping operations. So that is how the blending has to be in such a way. They have to see the diagram, go to the field and check whether the blending is done as per the requirement. Then only they should go for the, uh, up, go for the next step. Procedure. Have separate pumps for truck loading and not combined with the wagon loading as uh, later or normally of much capacity. This is another aspect. Because if uh, wagon and loading and uh, uh, truck loading, they are combined together for loading. Uh, tons, uh, the flow rates are different for wagon loading because the capacities are high. So it can create a lot of uh, miscalculations. That's why they keep it uh, separate. In case of large, uh, have separate pumps for uh, truck loading and uh, which I will take out. Ensure provision of uh, thermal safety relief valve on receiving lines as well as uh, discharge lines to release, release the pressure due to ambient temperature. This is another uh, aspect generally for all the hydrocarbons this thermal relief wall is required because uh, in the block conditions uh, due to ambient temperature the temp uh, uh, vapor pressure increases so it can uh, rupture the flanges and all so it can create uh, accidents that's why the thermal relief wall is provided it uh, releases relieves the excess pressure and that, that gets relieved into the tank okay this is uh, safeguarding Regimen. Whenever isolation walls are used to isolate the TSV, the thermal temperature set wall, isolation wall with the lock open pollution should be considered. They should not just keep the wall shut. Then the purpose of the safety wall is uh, uh, gone. And next is the safety relief walls. They went into tank, which I said, or uh, if I do a pipe to collect a drum, they can have a separate drum, there it will be discharged, and from there they dump. that is also possible. Then, uh, uh, seventh point no cast iron wall shall be used in oil service because the only cast steel wall shall be considered the design aspect where it can crack service. 
keep provision to empty out the loading headers back to the tank we mean so loading forms which i said wagons in the case of wagons also i said the same thing the same provision will be there then in case of large capacity wagon loading gantries where loading could vary from a rate to few wagons it is uh, desirable to provide a minimum flow controller because uh, continuously pumping will be on so at one time one uh, tank may be uh, one wagon may be receiving but uh, it may be uh, not be adequate for the pump because uh, pump capacity may be quite high so that's why they have they, they have to have uh, the circulation line uh, minimum circulation line to protect the pump so this is the design aspect again then uh, where flow conditions and totalizers are provided for gantries so from there they will know for each tank a wagon or tanker how much has been loaded they will know from there they prepare the chalan voucher whatever it is because it has to go for uh, payment so that is how it is it's all uh, automated and of course people will be monitoring the uh, activities for tank truck loading it should uh, for tank truck loading should preferably be done with set flow indicators rather than the manual because normally in the petrol pump also nowadays you can see the, uh, the mechanic operator he sets if you say uh, uh, 50 liters he sets it and starts so when it comes to 50 liters it stops it is that type of arrangement he is talking about and a fireproof uh, remote operated shutter bolts for loading headers so that uh, gantry headers can be isolated in case of emergency so that is also there so loading points shall have quick shut off bolts there is a plug or a bull bolt immediately shuts off so prevent further uh, 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 leak or this one is avoided there. ensure vacuum release valves with the chain lever arrangement for releasing in case stuck up uh, vacuum release uh, valves so that this particular arrangement also is uh, provided so this prevents uh, uh, release of uh, so, uh, accumulation of vacuum so this is another uh, provision given that on the left side you can see the tank truck loading uh, facility is uh, shown there this is how normally it looks and uh, next point is that there would be Variations in temperature, number of trucks or uh, wagons being loaded at a time. The flow rate through the each point would also vary. Whatever I said for the wagon, same thing is applicable for a tank truck also. So provide restriction or if it's here, what do you do? Uh, there we had, uh, had shown it, it was a minimum circulation line here. They can have restricted orifice that uh, restricted quantity only will flow. So that will give enough back pressure to the line. So that is adequate for the pump to get protected. So this again restricts the velocity up to six meter per second, particularly for motor spirit. Otherwise, it can cause a static electricity problem. This is another aspect here. Then Kero and the diesel it can form multiple point because kerosene and diesel hardly any difference is there in the properties uh, so they can have a multi-point and uh, based on that they can pop out similarly LDO and the fuel oil may be combined because the properties are more or less uh, similar two types of uh, naphtha that is the HAN uh, and the LAN can be put together because again the properties are together they have to see those things and however ATF and MS shall be exclusive is a clear cut uh, uh, demarcation is here ATF is a very very sensitive thing and similarly 
go to spirit. They are for different purposes. So they have to be different. And uh, <coughs> all um, flange points in loading a header and loading points shall be provided with uh, jumper weights, which I was mentioning. The petrol pump, you will see this. The same thing is, will be, you can see here also, loading uh, wagon, uh, truck, uh, tank truck loading sites. An earthing of uh, loading country shall be provided at uh, structure pillars. Railway gantry should be grounded at uh, every 25 meter. So, uh, loading uh, header in the uh, loading gantry shall be bonded to the railway track at every 25 meters. This is all to take care of the static electricity issues. Earthing of tank trucks shall be ensured before commanding, uh, commencing loading and unloading operation. This is one of the standard operating procedure itself. So the operator who is uh, going for uh, loading, he must ensure that uh, the truck is, uh, the earthing is uh, done. Is They have a checklist, they have to tick each and every item. This is, this is one of the points. <laughs> And uh, next is uh, in case of loading hoses, only neoprene impregnated uh, hoses supp uh, supplemented with uh, external wire connecting loading nozzles to pipes should be used. This is again for uh, static electricity reasons. Now, all tank wagons and uh, tank trucks should have fill pipe leading to the bottom. Use a portable fill pipe if required. This is again. Static fills. Everywhere you will find the static electricity issue here. Splash filling is permissible for uh, asphalt loading in a tank truck or a loading load bag or a tank wagons. Where bottom loading is done, that is uh, most of you must have seen in the, uh, the train um, uh, water filling. Some many places nowadays they fill from the bottom. The same thing is here also. Where uh, Bottom loading is done. Deflective plates in the tank or wagon should be ensured. This is to prevent uh, churning <coughs> or damage. Bottom flame proof uh, lighting should be provided for uh, night time. Uh, checking of uh, wagon bottom needs to facilitate proper sealing and inspection because they have to see from the bottom. So, this is the uh, to facilitate proper inspection. Loading a gantry platform should have at least one explosion-proof telephone for communication. These are all the circulations. So each one will have phone. In addition to that, nowadays they use the walkie-talkie. So there should not be any, any issues for this sort of uh, problems. And the gantry shall be protected with a well-designed uh, firefighting system. This is under which is the standard 116 and 117. And uh, tank wagon and the tank uh, truck loading gantry shall be suitable for all weather conditions because uh, they have to do uh, day and night, 24 hours uh, uh, job it is. So it should be designed that way. The loading platforms, uh, swing type, shall be light in construction, bottom, wrist, shall be neoprene impact to avoid the spark generation due to impact. Because spark generation is, a, is one of the things because it can happen due to static electricity or by metal to metal contact or stone to metal contact. Anything can cause um, a spark. In addition, in these areas, smoking is strictly prohibited. Uh, all of you know that. Then again, a proper handrail arrangement on opposite sides. Then uh, well maintained earthing uh, clamps for earthing hook trucks. Protection against a uh, surge in the uh, loading header due to sudden surge in loading rate. All the provisions uh, provided. Provision of shock absorber as one of the surge uh, protection method uh, at suitable locations on railroad. Uh, loading header. 
wagon or loading uh, gantry shall be on concrete supports alternatively fire proofing shall be done up to the platform if made of steel structure this is big in case fire catches the platform should not get melted due to heat that's why the fire proofing is required if the entire loading gantry including the areas below railway lines uh, or truck bays for smooth draining and collection of uh, spills so below the uh, uh, area there will be collecting pits uh, it will uh, go to the particular location for collection to avoid hydrogon spillage provide the underground drains with the riser and the funnel for each loading point to insert the hose uh, the no open drains along with the along the railway line gantry shall be covered with uh, gratings so that as not to endanger movement of person provide all the entering truck uh, truck loading gantry with the flame arresters at the exhaust this is another important thing whenever the truck enters this uh, loading area must uh, come with the flame arrest this is to prevent uh, because uh, the those engines generate uh, sparks so the spark should not come outside and cause fire in case any gas is there it will explode so that's why the very is stringent uh, measure so without uh, flame arrest the vehicle is not allowed to enter the gantry area that is a point and the same thing is there for all the refineries also nowadays they don't allow without flame arrestor any vehicle to enter route all the oil and uh, water collected from loading areas to central wastewater treatment facilities and they separate the oil from the water and uh, use it where such a central facility does not exist uh example terminals or bulk line this may not be possible so then water collection facility separation system should be provided and this could be a catch basin or a trap or ap separator or similar facility so that uh, they have to go for such things a slop tank may be a mark for storing separated oil so the slop tank as a slop material can be uh, pumped back to crude tank if they have other way they have to uh, dispose it of separately that is all possible in the case of handling of a sick wagon sick wagon or truck uh, the wagon or uh, is found leaking during loading keep provision for unloading the content safely because already it may have and the going has to be uh, removed safely a drain header should be provided they have to drain out the content to an underground tank or sump from where it can be pumped out to storage tank or to a loading header if a mobile pump is used for unloading a sick wagon ensure to use an explosion proof uh, motor this is again in this areas explosion proof motor has to be used not normal motor because the normal motor generally creates a spark so they cannot be used here that is an important aspect these are all the simulations similar facility should be provided for unloading sick tanker also the same thing is applicable here. then for underground drainage a network of underground drainage system should be provided to collect all uh, drains from all the points Uh, from tank or uh, loading area and all this go to centralized area and uh, uh, process they go to water the uh, wastewater treatment uh, plant or oil catcher and uh, separate and do for the process receiving sump receiving sump of the central uh, oil water treatment facility uh, shall have inverted their arrangement to scheme of that is a, the on the inside the, the there will be a wall it will be from top to bo- almost to the bottom so due to the 
the oil will float on that so it will stop the oil only water will go it is like that very simple arrangement but a very effective and the slop oil uh, collection sump separated <coughs> oil from waste water treatment plant should be routed to underground sump called the slop oil uh, sump in the case of refineries they collect this slop and uh, send it back to uh, the processing plant for uh, either the crude unit or a cook unit where a coker wherever it is and so they uh, recycle such facility may not be available for other places where refineries are not available. Then the unit slops of spec products uh, during startup or shutdown. How the slop is getting generated? Of spec uh, products during uh, startup or shutdown of process units, that is the refineries, are routed to dry slop tanks. Route the hot and uh, heavy products separately to a tank and uh, High RVP, that the RVP is radio wave pressure uh, products to another tank. That is light slop tank and heavy slop tank. They have to be separate. And uh, design the tanks to suit the pumping rate, RVP, etc., and uh, suitable and suitable for floating roof uh, type. Then they have to pump out these particular tanks. These uh, dry slop tanks. Uh, dry slops are either routed to crude tank or directly to process, uh, process unit, uh, slop stream in processing unit, I mentioned earlier. And for the wet slops, wet slops normally they contain moisture, so they cannot be used directly. So wet slop uh, carry water, uh, water, and hence these tanks should be used, uh, designed uh, with a liberal corrosion allowance because the corrosion is a possibility here. Wet slops are allowed to settle in wet slop tanks for further uh, water separation and subsequent draining. They drain out the water and uh, they check the sample and send it back. That is all possible. Supervise the draining and the transfer the oil to dry slop tanks. This is uh, purely operational uh, aspects and this operation has caused many accidents because uh, people think it may drain out for uh, say uh, to one hour, probably it may have drained in a half an hour and afterwards oil started coming and it has created many accidents. So this is a pure uh, uh, operational aspect. The golden rule is as long as the draining is there, a person should be standby. So very simple, but uh, may not be followed sometimes. Now, uh, the, now we are coming to the incident and accidents involving oil storage handling in terminals. That is, what are the causes of accidents? Here I have given about the static electricity is one of the causes. Um, it is an imbalance of uh, electrical charges between one piece of equipment and another. Causes flow of uh, hydrocarbon in, into or out of a tank. Mixing of fluids in a tank or movement of vapor into or out of a tank. These are the causes due to which static electricity can form. And lightning is also a possibility. So transfer of hydrocarbon from a tank to a vehicle. That is a tank may be under positive charge and the vehicle may be under negative charge. Once they combine, that can be a spark. So lighting is a very uh, high uh, uh, power uh, electric uh, static electricity it causes really uh, work. So what are the reason, uh, causes uh, due to operational error? Drain uh, walls accidentally left open, which I said earlier sometime back. Overfill or SOP not followed when closure during loading or Tank cars move during loading or in the temperature, high in the temperature or oil leaks. These are the reasons uh, operational error. Equipment or instrument failure, thermostat failure, oxygen and laser failure, floating of floating roof malfunction, three faults, accidental opening, heat, a heater failure, discharge failure, valve rupture, overheating of supercooling, wind ball. Uh, 
failure to open. These are the reasons, possible reasons for instrument error, instrument failure, lightning, foregrounding, rim seal leaks, and uh, direct heat. Normally, the uh, terminal or refinery, they have lightning protector. So even if lightning happens also, it attacks the shop in, and from there it is grounded. So the other equipments are protected. So if that is not done, then uh, uh, there's a possibility. Yes. And static electricity, rubber seal cutting, poor grounding, fluid and solid transfer, maintenance error, sparks, non-explosion proof, uh, proofing, circuit sh shorting and faulty welding, tank rupture, poor soldering, welding, water it is, cell distortion, poor fabrication, corrosion, high pressure fluid backup, micro induced uh, material fatigue. These are all the different reasons due to which tank rupture can happen. Piping leak, low temperatures leak during oil left, oil theft from pipeline, flammable liquid leak, broken uh, propane line or pump leak. Then miscellaneous causes other causes, auto ignition, Anyway, reaction. These chances are very less in oil turners because uh, the material handle is so different, but it is a possible uh, because due to some chemical reactions. Natural calamities, yes, quite possible. Uh, either cyclone or whatever it is, uh, heavy wind. Then uh, open flame, theft, arson. These are the different reasons due to which it can happen. Then uh, what are the prevention methods? Uh, the design, uh, following standards and the regulations, and hazard identification, safe distance from habitation sites, and safe uh, site inspection. Yeah. They have to be followed in the design stage. And maintenance, hardware permit, uh, risk based inspection, uh, proper equipment, use proper equipment, personal protection equipment, environment monitoring. Routine inspections and ventilation. These are coming under the maintenance uh, to prevent uh, this, uh, maintenance uh, issued problems. Then equipment, pressure retaining, corrosion resistance, pressure relief systems, vibration control, and grounding. Then workplace, static electricity protection, monitoring, and measurements. And hazard communication waste oil and uh, water treatment. So these are the things to be kept in mind and uh, to prevent uh, this one. The other one is operation maintenance the management, following appropriate SOP or two inspections, training and education among uh, employees, safety audit, ignition control, source control, or safety relations. And as for the miscellaneous checks, grounding, fire protection, risk assessment, and emergency response. Anyway, these things will automatically fall into the above categories. Anyway. So what are the do's and don'ts? What are the major uh, loss of containment in oil terminals? This is another uh, thing to be kept in mind. Tank overflow, tank uh, Floor corrosion and leak, and tank water drain pipe leak, and the flange leak. These are the uh, uh, reasons due to which uh, loss of containment can take place in the oil kernel or uh, during storage. Uh, so, what are the do's and don'ts? Proper lineup to be checked before receiving or pumping out to or from a tank. Tank dip showing in the instrument is to be cross checked by manual dipping intermittently. Then um, check tank level depletion or increase, depletion or increase by comparing with receiving or pump out rate. Use proper tools and tackles. Do not allow any job that is both hot and cold work uh, jobs without clearance in 
four pyramid system. Break glass off nearest manual call point during fire. So this has to be done in case somebody someone notices fire. Be aware of sighting codes and assembly point, and maintain proper communication. These are the things to be followed. Uh, general guidelines because very effective and very important they are. And uh, as for the environmental aspect is concerned, if oil is uh, uh, spilled onto the ground, the entire ground becomes uh, 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 it causes a pollution because the uh, oil gets accumulated on the ground. That is one thing. Even if it is dried also. Oil remains below the surface, and during rain, the water, the oil further goes down. And not only that, and due to the porosity, it goes to nearby areas, or maybe outside the compound also, and causes uh, uh, some uh, pollution, the water wells and other things. Lot many pro problems. So it, it's this is a real environmental issue which has to be kept in mind. That's why. Uh, this uh, uh, many places you would have seen that uh, paved area. This is uh, using the paved area. This is for this reason mainly. The oil is not allowed to spill on the, the soil. So soil contamination with the oil storage tanks. This is hazardous waste. These are the reasons. Hazardous waste, oil spills, sludge uh, from the treatment process or coke dust. These are the uh, possibilities. This is the fertility of the soil and impacts growth and the quality of crops. Oil spill and the evaporation of products pollutes the area. Each activity involves the operation of tank farm has a potential spill risk. And it is a fire hazard also. Oil spill is there. Evaporation of different types of gases causing pollution. Air pollution also. The major air pollutants are as follows sludge, this nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide. Hydrocarbons such as natural gas and other later volatile fuels and oils are also released to atmosphere. They are all not uh, environment friendly, definitely. But we use it because we need them. And unlike the pollutants from a refinery, those uh, these pollutants are not infested with the synthetic chemicals, uh, toxic catalysts. So here the uh, impact is uh, of a different type. But in refinery, the pollution are in a much uh, higher level. Okay, but still the problem remains. So the safety and the uh, security of oil storage tanks and or terminal depends on design standards for containers. The design of the tank must contain any potential spills, protection against the corrosion and other environmental hazards. So that should be the real uh, thing to go. Now we are coming to the two case studies. One is uh, happened. Uh, it is called the Bunsfield uh, field incident. The storage tank uh, overfill followed by vapor load ex, uh, explosion. Here, the possible cause was overflow of gasoline from the conventional above ground tank, resulted in vapor load, which got ignited and caused a large explosion. It was a, a, a massive accident, actually, and the nearby Residential area also got affected, including the terminal, of course. Here, the prime factor, the primary factor was uh, faulty level instrumentation because they did not have the uh, additional instrument uh, to level uh, instrument to check. They were depending on one level instrument uh, uh, level gauge, and that failed. That was one of the main factors. Other contributing factors, loss of uh, secondary and tertiary containment from the bun or a dikes. The dikes, uh, once uh, 
they did not maintain the dike area. So and there some gaps were there when the gas gasoline was falling, and through the dike area, the gaps, so uh, gasoline started uh, coming out, and it went into the stormwater uh, drain area, and it went everywhere, and there was a because it was a gasoline or gasoline is nothing but petrol. So a lot of vapor cloud started forming, and uh, due to some reason, spark got developed, and uh, the entire area got exploded. And the vapor uh, cloud went into a nearby residential area also. They also got into uh, problems because the explosion effect was so much. Okay, so this is one. So, the level instrumentation is uh, really a problem and the containment areas. So that is why the monitoring is very important and the inspection also. There is a case of second case, the storage tank explosion affair. This was the case like here, 8,000 gallons of, of uh, uh, gasoline was pumped or uh, pumped out or drained out from the tank. 55 gallons remaining uh, remained in the sum. That means the 55 gallons is a huge amount that remained in the tank. And uh, due, during the course of time, it slowly started evaporating because inside pressure was not much. The operator then started filling the tank with the diesel because here the main thing is uh, it was under a gasoline service. Now they are taking to diesel service. The services are different. Here, they started filling the tank with the diesel at uh, 24,000 barrels per day. It is a much high velocity. So during oil filling, the internal explosion occurred, damaging the tank followed by fire. In fact, the estimation was the it was about just two inches below the uh, this one float. There, the, it happened. That is how it was calculated. Because that time the static electricity formed, because already gasoline vapor was there. That was sufficient. Because gasoline requires uh, as little energy as 0.25 millijoules for ignition. So it doesn't need much uh, heat. Uh, this one, it just catches. So once it catches fire, everything is gone. So that's how it happened. Uh, the primary factor was the presence of gasoline vapor. Uh, then next point is turbulence. This is what I was telling earlier. The velocity was so much, it was uh, this one disturbing the area. The more disturbance, the most electricity forms. Uh, disturbance caused by high velocity of diesel because they were pumping at a very high rate. So that's why the accident happened. So the end result was shown in the left side. This is how the tank remains uh, so shape. So now <clears throat> many accidents have happened, uh, occurred due to lack of understanding or normal uh, non-observance of safety measures in the tank form or oil terminals. And there are many incidents also now due to time constraint and not able to show or uh, tell. But the point here is uh, the safe work practices are useful for safety of uh, persons in charge of the work, in charge of the process and risk management of the process. And equipment. So they could save your life and others. So uh, come to the end, so thank you. If you have any queries, please uh, help. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for such an elaborate session. Uh, we have some questions. We'll address it. Um, the first question is, uh, can you explain a, a dome type and cone type? Well, the, the term itself is explaining. The cone is a, like a, 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 a top. It is a cone, forming a cone. And the dome is the it forms a dome. Very simple. It is a state area. This one. There is nothing to explain on that. 
Okay, sir, we'll move to the next question. Yeah. Um, how do you differentiate API uh, 2000 and API 650 because both applied for the low storage tanks? Uh, I have not gone into that particular uh, aspect, actually. Uh, you have to see that uh, uh, standards, generally it is possible to explain. Right now, often I will not be able to tell that. Okay, sir. Uh, next question. What is the difference between terminal versus gantry? Uh, gantry is a place where the actual loading is taking place, either a tank truck or this one. Terminal is uh, consisting of a, a tank, uh, a storage tanks plus a loading area. This is the main difference. Uh, next question, uh, does blanketing line and the equipments like control wall should be comply with API 650? Yeah, definitely, because they will uh, uh, stipulate this, this is uh, uh, to be used uh, as per the uh, guidelines. Uh, can you explain what is uh, siphonic drain line? Siphon. Due to the pressure, the hydrogen uh, uh, tanks will have uh, uh, liquid. Uh, due to the hydrostatic pressure, when you and this is uh, the drain is at the bottom. Due to the pressure itself, self uh, activating pressure itself, it will come out. Uh, what is the purpose of heel stripping line? What is that? Heel? heel stripping line. No, I am not able to catch that uh, term. That is stripping line. Okay, sir. Uh, next question. Is a dip pipe mandatory for avoiding static charge buildup during aspiration and inspiration of tank? Yeah, because uh, by design, that uh, dip rod should be uh, the bottom. It, it was explained many times in the presentation. Why it is required? Otherwise, it uh, even slight difference also in the case study two also I explained. The slight difference also makes a lot of difference. That is why they are very very clear on this particular aspect. It has to go down. Uh, next question: uh, What is access hatch? Access hatch is to enter. A uh, flexible hose for water drain in floating roof tank is present inside the tank and collects water in the drain of lower level of the tank. Can you explain? See, this water, uh, this, uh, this hose is connected to the roof. From the roof, it is always connected. Whenever any water comes on the roof, that comes through this hose and goes out. It doesn't have any connectivity with the material inside the tank because if any if there is any rupture, the hydrocarbon will enter the hose and come out. This is a serious thing. I think I explained that also. It is exclusively to remove water accumulated on the roof. Um, which which is the robust design for level measurement? Uh, or radar uh, for flammable material stored in a tank is that allowed uh, or and can it act yeah. as a source of ignition source no see uh, nowadays the uh, radar type is the preferred method because it is more uh, reliable the manual one uh, has cost a lot of uh, yeah, this one. Uh, the case two is uh, case one is that only they use the manual uh, type of thing. And uh, the, one of the reasons or uh, suspected reasons was that the manual float slightly got tilted and that caused the elect uh, static electricity. That was the, one of the main reasons it got, uh, it got, got fired. So manual thing, now it is not the preferred one. Radar type is more safe and throughout the world, people started using that and it is uh, more safe. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन वी यूज फार फ्लोटिंग रूफ फॉर मेथेनॉल स्टोरेज एट बॉइलिंग पॉइंट सिक्सटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस This is a design aspect. I now often I will be able to tell this. Okay, sir. So, uh, next question. Uh, can you say which corrosion is good and when it is promoted for deploy deployment? Corrosion as such should be avoided in the first place because it eats the metal. There is no no better or corrosion should be avoided. Why we are giving more corrosion allowance? Because we know there will be corrosion. So to you know extend the life period of the equipment, we do it. Otherwise, corrosion is not a good thing to have. Uh, what is the purpose of nitrogen blanketing? It prevents uh, atmospheric air entering. And because atmospheric air brings uh, oxygen as well as uh, moisture, so for this uh, pro specific product like ATF, uh, uh, where the water is not allowed, the external water, this is uh, preventing. And uh, some places, uh, some uh, compounds or some hydrocarbon, they can react with the oxygen. So that also is a possibility. That is why nitrogen blanketing is done because nitrogen is a inert material. Uh, what is the definition criteria for distinction tanks and vessels in context of internal pressure? The question is not clear. What is that? A uh, definition criteria for distinction tanks and vessels in context of internal pressure. They are given as per atmospheric tank, uh, uh, low pressure tank, high pressure tank. That I am saying the pressure uh, variations are already given in that question. Uh, uh, Based on it, it is decided, and uh, what are the products to be uh, designed for that? That is also given. That please go through that, you will get it. Uh, can you explain the role of nozzle sizing to reduce the velocity uh, on lower side to avoid any static buildup? Here. Uh, This uh, second case is exactly that they were using, uh, though I have not given it, as uh, six meters per uh, second uh, rate it was going. So it was very very high rate for that. So it was causing a uh, churning inside the tank and a lot of disturbance. That's the way the static electricity form. So it is that. So one meter per second normally is the standard uh, everywhere. So if you try to increase that, you must be very careful. Uh, what is the purpose of slot dipping device? Slot dipping device. This is uh, In... to uh, check the level. Dip, uh, dip gauge. Right? They put a dip rod and check. Uh, is loading arm to load truck mandatory? Depends on the uh, 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 design. The, the, this is the uh, places more automated. They may have loading arm. If it is uh, manually controlled, probably operator may go up and uh, put uh, connect the hose and all those things. This is, uh, if the workload is less, so they can do that. So it depends on the requirement and design. Can you obviously update? manual uh, things have more safety aspect nowadays people go for more uh, automation so loading arm is one of the things of course it has got its own limitations because leak chances are there but uh, everywhere they have provided adequate uh, uh, provisions to prevent overcome such a situations okay, next uh, can you brief on tank rollover phenomena due to admission of hot gas or a highly volatile liquid or hydrocarbon? Tank rollover phenomena. Yes, sir. I am not getting this. The first time I am coming across this particular thing. Maybe yes, it is right. 
ओके ओके सर आई थिंक वी हैव एड्रेस ऑल द क्वेश्चंस आई थिंक देयर इज नो मोर क्वेश्चंस फॉर एनीवन ओके वील वाइंड अप द सेशन थैंक यू सो मच एवरी वन फॉर इंट्रैक्ट मेकिंग दिस अ वेरी इंटरेक्टिव सेशन एंड थैंक यू सर फॉर एड्रेसिंग ईच एंड एवरी डाउट्स I will be sharing the material of this uh, training session in our WhatsApp group. Uh, so, if you if you are not part of the WhatsApp group yet, please join. The link of the WhatsApp group is given in the post. Uh, we can see, uh, see it in the comment section. And um, thank you, everyone. Uh, if you are interested to gain certification for this particular module, uh, you can uh, register for assessment. The assessment will be conducted on Monday. Uh, so, thank you, everyone. Thank you for connecting. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants. Good luck. Thank you, sir.